bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. Doo -doo -doo -doo. By the way, I don't walk around the house singing. I know I don't have a singing voice. Don't tell me what I already know. I'll edit that out of this video. Don't worry about it. You'll never see that part. <laughs> um, how about the conjugate principles? So we, everybody's seen the yin yang symbol, right? The uh, the light section and the darker section, the yin yang symbol. Um, ultimately, nature has a uh, conjugate um, pair, and it's not a pair. And a pair implies one of something and another one of something, kind of like a pair of shoes, you know, a left shoe and a right shoe. But a conjugate pair meaning an inseparable holos. Things that are distinguished and differentiated out, which are, of course, one thing. A really crude example of that, of course, would be like ice, water, and steam, which, of course, are all fundamentally one thing. Human beings love to pigeonhole things, like, well, that's hard and cold, that's what I call that ice, and that stuff is wet and drippy, and call that water. It's all the same stuff, right? Even a child knows that. Yet we still have these silly terms that are used, of course, for communication, and people get lost in words rather than the essa of what something is. Anyway, there's a, a conjugate pair from one corner of the universe to the other. And uh, the first two numbers, by the way, of the Fibonacci sequence are one and one. And this doesn't imply, well, there's one and there's one. It's the principle and the attribute. The elimination out of the Judeo-Christian idea of original sin is very simple in monistic monism. What do I mean by monistic monism? Original, and I emphasize original Buddhism. The teachings of Plotinus, Proclus, Numenius, Syrianus, Demetius, Plato, Pythagoras, on and on and on. Yeah? Advar Vedanta, of his founder, Sri Sankaracharya, the principal Upanishads. Yes, there is no original sin or prima causa, or first cause within those systems. What's the cause for the descent of the soul? Well, the extrinsic attribute of the absolute. Nothing can be known. Nothing is or even is not. And by is not, I mean completely unreal. We all have ideas of things in our heads that anybody with a half a brain anyway knows are not real. Unicorns, leprechauns, and well, one of the attributes of a unicorn, it's horse-like, and it has a horn sticking out of its head, right? These would be attributes of a unicorn, something that doesn't even exist at all. Nobody could... And you could say, this kind of be like a, a bar trick, if you will. I say, I'll give you a million dollars if you could think of something, the essence, you know, something that has no attributes. It's completely impossible. The only thing anybody could be said or ideated, it must have usually way more than one attribute. It's like, there's a rock. They say it's just made out of gold or something. Well, you know, it's a certain size and shape and weight. You know, those are its attributes. So nothing is that doesn't have one attribute. And this includes that which is most simple and most divine, the agathon, or the absolute. That which the good is, is also, too, that which the good does. And by does is really an inappropriate word. It's not doing something. It is the essence of what it is. Yes? This would be the dark principle. By the way, there's two darknesses in genuine metaphysics. The dark, there's the darkness that's actually cast by matter. It's like, there's the shadow. There's light coming in here. we got a shadow here. That's one darkness. The other darkness is the principle of what something is because it cannot be known. And this has been written about countless different times by countless different uh, gurus throughout the ages. The unknown God, you know, uh, the dark absolute. This would be the principle of light because nobody sees light. Sure you do. You can see it right there. Now we're looking at the extrinsic attribute of light, which is illumination. That which goes forth, however, illumination is not an emission, but that's a matter for another video, which I've already made many, many, many times, because light's not an emission. It's a disturbance of the medium, specifically a coaxial disturbance. As Nikola Tesla said, light is nothing other than a sound wave in the ether. Sound is not an emission. Sound is a disturbance in the medium, that being oxygen and nitrogen. The light itself, the energy that's released, is a disturbance of the medium, which is a specific coaxial disturbance. I don't know if you know what the cross-section of a coax cable is. Center conductor, dielectric, and then a copper shielding, which uh, contains the rebounding signal measured in frequency and wavelength. But nothing is without at least one attribute. This is the reason why the first two numbers of the Fibonacci sequence, sorry, the golden ratio, is one and one. Principle and attribute. These are not two things. These are one thing. The same thing of all fields. Because so-called gravity, the phenomena, is not autonomous. It is no different than dielectric acceleration or what's conventionally called electrostatic cling. Everybody knows what electrostatic cling is. 
Gravity is nothing other than a different attributional state of dielectric acceleration. Electricity is a hybrid of dielectricity and, is a magnet and magnetism. Phi times psi equals Q and Planck of electrification. This is the inseparable dyad, just like the one and one of the first two digits of the Fibonacci sequence. The principle and the attribute. The good and what good does. There's the good, and then there's the good itself in manifestation. There's light and illumination. Well... <clears throat> If we take dielectricity as light, which nobody sees light. Sure you see light. You're crazy. What's wrong with you, you fat, bold guy? Nobody sees light. It's not my idea or belief or conviction. It's a fact. People only see illumination. Yes, nobody sees light. Light is the principle of that disturbance or that release of energy. Yes? Well, we take dielectric to be the light. Magnetism is unequivocally magnetism because magnetism is a dielectric field. Illumination is the field of light. The good is manifest and things that are good or a resemblance of the good is the field of the good. Magnetism is the dielectric field. Specifically, it is the force in motion centrifugal three-dimensional force vector of the loss of energy, i.e. the dielectric, which of course is centered at the plane of inertia, right? The center of the hyperboloid. You know what an hourglass shape is? It's a hyperboloid. You know the the center of an hourglass, there's that little pinch point there. If we could imagine that pinpoint infinitely small to the point of complete invisibility in this physical universe, yes, that would be the ether. That would be the null point with no Cartesian value. The plane of inertia circles it. Explaining the plane of inertia is actually divinely simple, but it's hard to do. It actually sits at the lowest pressure mediation between the centrifugal magnetic and the centripetal convergent dielectric. It sets at this low pressure nodal point between both fields. It's kind of like two people fighting, you know, like, here's a really crude example, like mom and, mom and dad are bickering and, you know, the child is the plane of inertia. The child, like, go hide underneath the bed or the closet, the place where he feels most calm and most safe. So the plane of inertia is the lowest pressure point between the, the uh, mutually, um, uh, the mutually destructive constructive and destructive interference between the magnetic and the dielectric. That's kind of a really brief explanation of the plane of inertia. But the plane of inertia is not a field. It has its own attributes and it sits at a special place. And I can talk about the plane of inertia in another video. But the uh, centrifugal force and motion vector of the toroidal field that we call magnetism is nothing other than a modality of the dielectric and loss of that energy or inertia. Just as we say ice. Ice is to water as magnetism is to the dielectric. This is the conjugate field geometry of the entire universe. Yes, it's no different than speaking of the second one, which is not another one, it's just the attribute of the first one. Attribute of the first one is that second one on the second digit of the Fibonacci sequence, one and one. Dielectric and magnetic. These are not two things, they're one thing. They're holos, they're principle and attribute. This means that magnetism is the attribute of the dielectric. And this is irreducibly and universally undeniable. The conjugate pair of Mother Nature from one corner of this universe to the other are the magnetic and the dielectric. And you find countless examples of this in ancient Egyptian metaphysics. Yes, the principle and the attribute, yes. Find it also, too, in Plato's cave analogy. Yes, we have two different lights. You have the sunlight outside of the cave. You have a fire behind those people who are holding up sock puppets, which are casting shadows on the wall that the prisoners are, um, you know, entertained by. And they confuse that uh, inferior light, the, the inferior light of the, uh, the fire inside the cave casting the shadows with the superior light, which is antecedent to the cave itself, is outside up in the sky. This would be the solar absolute or the solar agathon. So, there is this inseparable conjugate pair. But they're not a pair like a pair of shoes. Here's a shoe and there's another shoe. No, they are one thing that are only divided by, and not divided at all, ultimately, divided in their natures and perceived natures principle and attribute, an inseparable holos, this Greek word meaning union, where we get the word holography. We have the reference beam 
and uh, the reflected beam which contrive to make the three-dimensional universe that we call the hologram, the holos. But it is, most people don't know how holograms are made, but uh, it's fascinating to learn how a true optical hologram is made. But, uh, magnetism is the dielectric field, quote, unquote. That's a quote from Faraday, by the way, Michael Faraday. The second one is just the field of the agathon, its attributional nature, like light and illumination, the good and the good, ice and water, or water and ice, depending on how you look at it, yeah. Say, so which one came first? It's like you live on a hot world or a cold world. If you live on a cold world, ice would be the first one, <laughs> and the water would be like if it was heated up. You live on our world, through much of the world anyway. You start with water, and then you go to ice. So ice would be the second one instead of the first one. But this is the conjugate pair of the entire universe from one end to the next. If one truly understands this very simplex principle, I said simplex, not simple, then you really can understand the rest of things quite easily. And you can understand none of it without having this primer within your mind with complete clarity. And I, I don't mean have it within your mind. And I watched the video and I heard what he said. It's like, yeah, but did you understand it? Did you make it yours? You know, listening to something is not having something. You know, I could watch somebody make a, a fancy puffy cake riddled with uh, strawberries and dripping with chocolate molten glaze on it, but it's not mine. I can't, I can't eat what I saw. <laughs> not that I want to eat that. Actually, I do. <laughs> I don't actually like sweets, but I think I would eat something that nice. Actually, I'd like... Uh, uh, I know what I'd like. Blackberry pie that's like really hot, uh, drizzled with uh, melting vanilla ice cream. <laughs> I'm going to edit that out of this video. By making it yours, i.e. having the primer of the universe, the conjugate pair and understanding what they are, everything else really does come quite simply. Because everything is pressure mediation without understanding the conjugate pair. The second one the Greeks called Ananke. They also too called it the Eoristos Dias, the indefinite dyad. And dyad, people always think, means two. It's dyads, two things, like a pair of shoes. There's that shoe and there's that shoe. It's like, no, it's not. They're just like that. They're only distinguished in that one's a principle and one's the attribute. And this is what confuses everybody about monistic metaphysics, which basically is all metaphysics. Not all of it, but a lot of it. Platonism. The ancient Egyptian, the principal Upanishads, Pythagoras, Plato, Plotinus, Numenius, Syrianus, Demetrius, <laughs> Proclus, Iamblichus, on and on and on. You, without understanding this, you can't understand anything. It's like, here's the head side of a toy, coin, and here's the tail side. It's like, no, it's just the silver, the coinage. This is the one, and this is the second one. Yeah, but they're both one silver. This is the magnetic, and this is the dielectric. Should have started with dielectric. Dielectric and magnetic. Yeah, but it's just ultimately just one thing. And herein enters the confusion. Because there are two darknesses in this universe from the perspective of metaphysics. There's the darkness of the one, which is the principle, which cannot be known objectively. Impossible! Yeah, the principle, not the attribute, because nobody sees light. They only see illumination. And the second darkness, which of course is the shadow cast by mass and magnitude, i.e. matter. There's a shadow, it's a darkness. He's like, we're not talking about this darkness, we're talking about the darkness of the one. Not the second one, which is visible, but the darkness of the first one. This is what confuses everybody. But it is really simplex. Not simple, but simplex it is. Lux. Everett us. Thanks for watching.